Joining us now is Bill Campbell, Double Line and Global Bond Strategy Co-Portfolio Manager, and so with us here on set, Lori Heinel of State Street uh, Global uh, Advisors. So how would you be positioned uh, headed into the Sunday elections? Uh, so going into the Sunday elections, uh, I'm currently flat uh, mm -hmm. on Argentina. I think that there's a lot of uh, unknowns. We don't know what, uh, well, I think the outcome is uh, a foregone conclusion that Alberto Fernandez uh, and, his, uh, and his team will come in, but we don't know what his cabinet will look like. And we don't know, importantly, what the economic team will look like and what the economic package that they're uh, going to have to present to the IMF will look like. Uh, my concern is that uh, immediately following these elections, if there is a first round win by Alberto Fernandez, uh, he may take some time to announce the measures uh, that he's going to put forward and announce his cabinet until he effectively uh, takes control in December. Mm -hmm. And the issue that we're seeing now is the reserve drain. So uh, the bank, uh, when you look at Argentina's central bank, uh, they had to implement capital controls in order to, uh, to slow down uh, capital outflow uh, from the country and we've seen about seven billion in uh, FX reserves uh, you know have to be used by the central bank in order to keep the currency from depreciating uh, to you know uh, more than uh, what we had seen following uh, the primary election uh, if you look at the blue rate which is uh, the unofficial rate you're looking at uh, a further discount from the official rate today of about 30 percent uh, so the time window is very limited and uh, the package the economic, uh, you know, and structural reforms that uh, Alberto's team can put forward to the IMF uh, are going to be critical, and he needs to do it quickly. So, Bill, how much confidence do you have that Fernandez, uh, should he win, is actually going to stick by this pledge uh, that he's basically going to make good on the debts or find some sort of amicable way to sort of sort this out with creditors? Well, I think, unfortunately, it might be a little bit out of his control, and uh, it looks like uh, we need to look at the other side of the coin or the other side of the negotiating uh, table, which is the IMF. And when we look at the IMF, their recent statements have been uh, that they're looking for debt sustainability with a high probability over the medium term. Now, that's a change because the prior program uh, that they implemented had debt sustainability with a low probability. And the, the implication of that means that that uh, under uh, shocks that the IMF will, uh, you know, test the Alberto Fernandez plan with, uh, he needs to come up with a substantial fiscal adjustment to be able to withstand, uh, you know, the shocks that the IMF are going to, you know, present to his plan. The biggest concern is we are currently looking at, uh, in Argentina, a primary deficit or a fiscal deficit excluding interest payments of about 1%. Uh, if we look at the export taxes, uh, which he's talking about and potential wealth taxes and maybe a little bit of growth, uh, which are all, uh, you know, uh, reasonable, but uh, maybe a little bit, uh, you know, on the optimistic side of the assumptions, maybe I can get to a 1% primary surplus. Mm -hmm. uh, but in order to meet the targets or the Uruguay style, uh, you know, targets that Alberto is talking about, I think he's going to need a primary surplus of about two to two and a half percent. And that's going to require uh, expenditure cuts. And what yeah. we've seen in in his campaign rhetoric is continued movement towards increasing uh, the social safety net and increasing subsidies. And I think the IM that's going to be the sticking point in the negotiation so, between the IMF and Alberto. So, Bill, clearly you've done a tremendous amount of work uh, on Argentina and its fiscal situation. Uh, we heard our reporter sort of set up uh, the, the, the vice president of this ticket, which is Cristina Fernandez, who used to run the government and was very unpopular in the business communities and instituted capital controls. Do you really think think that Alberto Fernandez is going to be leading the government? Why wouldn't it be Cristina? Uh, that's a great question, and I think uh, it's, a, it's a question that investors, uh, you know, we here at Double Line are looking at that closely. Our assumption is that uh, Alberto right now is focusing on trying to get the largest margin of victory he can in order to uh, solidify his legitimacy on this ticket. Uh, the concern is he's going to need to deliver a quick adjustment. If he cannot deliver growth, if he cannot increase real, real wages, uh, 
uh, he runs the risk that you start to see social unrest pick up. And in that scenario, I can see Christina uh, taking more of a, uh, you know, more of a leadership role on this ticket. Right. But initially, I think it's the balls in his court. He's got a small window to put together a credible package to try to get the IMF uh, to um, put a new, to get a new program in place with them. Right. This new program by the IMF would be a, an anchor for investors to potentially look at the country over, uh, you know, the next few years as, uh, you know, an investment opportunity. Right. So if Lori, he can't do that, I don't see the growth model. Laurie, I just want to bring you in here. I mean, Bill kind of mentions uh, the idea of social unrest in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And this is something that we've seen across South America, across Latin America in recent weeks and recent months. When you look at EM and particularly EM in that part of the world, uh, is it is it safe, I guess, to go back in? Because for most of this year, we've been hearing a lot of people saying EM is the place to be, and they specifically singled out some of these South American countries. Well, these markets have been incredibly volatile, right? So uh, certainly the political uh, result is just one step in the process, as we heard. There's also going to be negotiation around the credit. There's going to be policies. Uh, there's a lot more there. So we would still be quite cautious on the region. Mm -hmm. So interesting, though, because Mark Hayfley of UBS actually had a note out just yesterday taking the opposite view when it came to the equity market. Says that while investors need to monitor developments, we continue to see opportunities for investors in emerging market assets and nations that strive to reforms to economic to address economic uh, and social pressures. Um, do you distinguish that? Like when you're looking at emerging markets, like how do you take how do you factor that into your models? Well, the equity markets generally, we've been very cautious on emerging markets overall, uh, and we've been reducing our exposure. In fact, going more negative on EM throughout the year because again, a lot of the geopolitical tensions, trade are impacting emerging markets more even than they're impacting developed markets. We also have seen a lot of earnings disappointment. So there again, you've got companies that had high expectations and yet they've continued to miss. So whereas we were talking earlier in the U.S., we've been beating, in EM they've been actually coming down and not and missing. So uh, we're, we think it's still too early for EM. Uh, let's say we do get that reversal on the dollar that mm. may or may not ever <laughs> come. And then does that make it more attractive? Yeah. Well, on EM debt, generally, we've been more positive than EM equities. And there again, the story is quite a bit different. Uh, you actually have um, you know, improving credit quality. Mm -hmm. You have pretty attractive yields. And as you say, on a relative basis, they're not as overvalued as they were going into the temper ta uh, tantrum. So we actually, the taper tantrum rather. So we actually uh, like EM debt. It was kind of a Tam uh, tam <laughs> either way. It's, like it's all the same. Yeah. Uh, Bill, so rounding out with you here, if you broaden out to EM, what's the spot that has the most upside con considering we have issues in Argentina, Ecuador, you know, forced out its leadership, you had the protests this week in Chile. What's most appealing? Well, I, I have to agree with Lori. I think when we look at uh, local emerging market debt, the valuations still look attractive. I think on the FX side, uh, you know, the potential of uh, even a trade truce at uh, the APEC summit uh, would be uh, a net positive. And one thing I'd like to note is that inflation, we've had disinflation globally uh, over the past year, and that's uh, that has allowed central banks to cut aggressively across both developed markets and emerging markets. And uh, I think that when we're looking across the emerging market complex, yes, we have to be discerning, but compared to the taper tantrum, we're seeing improved twin deficits. Many countries have an improved fiscal, uh, current fiscal deficit and fiscal outlook, as well as a current account outlook. So uh, countries like Brazil, countries like, uh, you know, Mexico, or even uh, Russia with the, uh, you know, rate cut today, uh, you know, still present very attractive yields. And uh, the currency, uh, especially if you get uh, a removal of this headwind on trade, even if it's temporary, uh, could provide a nice boost uh, into, uh, for uh, the return outlook for the end of the year. All right, guys, thanks a lot. Really appreciate the conversation. Bill Campbell of Double Line and Laurie Heinel of State Street Global.